recently a MiG-29 of the Indian Air Force literally fell down to the ground. The aircraft was in a flat spin, apparently caused by an engine blowout when it was doing a low speed uh, stall type aerobatic maneuver. The, the blowout of one of the engines might have caused an yaw to the front of the air, uh, aircraft and cause it to a flat spin. Now the aircraft, and credit where it's true, he uh, narrowly avoided residential areas and landed the aircraft or crashed the aircraft in the in a field and himself he was able to eject and survive the incident. Then the incident has caused stir in the as usual in the Indian mainstream media but instead of finding out the actual reason of the failure the Indian mainstream media seems to be in a mood of sensationalization and villainification of whatever the hell they want why the hell would they investigate they got a political debate to do in the evening right yeah so to actually find out what was happening with the engine of the MiG-29 we have to go to the time when we were inducting these aircraft, we need a new aircraft because the Su-7s and the MiG-21s and the NAS were to be replaced and the LCA project uh, was still about 15-20 years supposedly um, to completion. So uh, we needed a multi-role frontline fighter with a short range interception abilities and a great thrust to weight ratio. Now the MiG-29 fit the bill because the Russians made the Twin RD-33 Klimov equipped MiG-29 with a thrust of about 110 kN dry to have the exact same role in the eastern and western, western and eastern sectors of the Russian Soviet Union. So the because the weather in the Arctic Circle and the Himalayas kind of mimic each other, so the aircraft was kind of tested and the Indian Air Force inducted it. Now the aircraft was a short-range aircraft and it excelled in dark flights, patrolling, had a great climb rate, so it was great for the high altitudes of the Himalayas and it was all around a great aircraft for its role. But in the Indian context, because the Russians designed the aircraft to have cheap and replaceable engines, and we ourselves, about the initial, I don't know, 20 years, we didn't have proper facilities that were producing those engines. So we were, every time we wanted to replace the engine, we had to send them to Russia or buy whole new engines and yada yada, and all those things. Now the, RD-33 had defects or the, as Mikhail Gurevich states, the, uh, the defects were minor defects and uh, even those minor defects could be ignored to extend the service life of the MiG-29 from 2000 hours to 4000 hours. Now the aircraft and its engine, we're going to look into these minor defects. Uh, research analysis in the transport research procedure by Polish researchers uh, of decommissioned MiG-29 engines, the RD-33 Klimovs of the Polish Air Force were analyzed. First, they took the engine and they um, look at, looked at their structure, the rotor blades, the other important things of the aircraft and uh, then they established what type of alloys were being used which were um, Z ZHS-26 and ZHS-26 I think ZHS-26-6 I think and these are unidirectionally casted alloys that are used in high pressure turbine rotor blades and low pressure turbine rotor blades and stator, stator vanes and the connections between the whole um, the wanes other alloys that were being used uh, in the discs and the other important parts were also established now the first um, the dynamic forces the centrifugal forces that were being inserted on all these parts were calculated and then the analysis to do actual analysis of the engine an industrial endoscope was used the industrial endoscope was put into the engine and various aspects of the engine were multiple engines in this case and were being analyzed so it was found that there were 
cracks and burned out material and interruptions in the stator vein roots and also in the connections there was cracks and burned out material and then there were damages to the rotor blades and other significant damages one of the guiding veins was literally ripped apart in this particular article or research they have called it opening it's a diplomatic language or a diplomatic word in this case so yeah it was hole in the guiding vein yeah yeah absolutely so the defects that you might think are serious looking at them the manufacturer Mika and Gurevich considered these defects minor defects and as I said before the aircraft would be still airworthy they said that it was only a combination of these minor defects what? that made the engine the RD33 claim of on the verge of decommissioning now it was all up to the pilot i guess when he was flying the mig-29 in the air and he was praying to god that the particular combination of minor defect doesn't occur he is an actual representation of a pilot i'm just kidding yeah but he probably felt that way. Now you would think at this point that the MiG-29 is a very inferior aircraft and you would be, well, you would be kind of 25% right. MiG-29 was made for a purpose that was very specific. It's like, um, well, let's call it a scalpel. You can make an ice structure from a scalpel and MiG-29 was a scalpel. You can't shove ice with a scalpel so yeah that was the problem now the MiG-29 had to struggle because the IF always kept changing the operational requirements that it needed to complete in its life cycle in the Indian Air Force it was one thing then it was another thing and it just go, goes on and go forward and then there were other things that were really bad for the Indian Air Force. Now you might have heard that the MiG-29 had 24 crashes but side by side if you compare other aircraft like the Myers 2000 which had 14, the Sukhoi 30 had about I think 13 or 14 and uh, about 58 Sepka Jaguars. Yeah, Jaguars seem to be quite susceptible to accidents, not just here, to, I don't know, everywhere. The Germans, the uh, yeah, British, yeah, yeah. They, I don't know, defying it wrong or something? Who knows? Anyway, the accidents uh, might be caused by engineering uh, um, uh, considerations, as I've explained, but uh, also, one thing I forgot, the materials used in the RD-33 clean off engines are very specific so the uh, the materials are quite satisfactory when they are operating in temperatures which are uh, between parameters that is the given parameters of the um, material but if the the variance is from 20 degrees celsius to 200 degrees celsius the uh, the materials uh, refractory um, properties deteriorate quite fast gradually or rapidly uh, according to the temperature and this is important because uh, Indian Air Force aircraft could fly from a base in Patan Court where the ambient temperature of the air is quite high in summer and it could fly up to the higher um, altitudes of the MLS where the ambient temperature is quite low so yes yeah, so but then again there are other aircraft that have met accidents in the Indian Air Force the reason for that is that the um, Indian Air Force because of its small size still has to perform the duty of securing our borders and maintaining air superiority over the subcontinent and due to the small size it has to do 2.5 times the training sorties, the simulated battle exercises, patrolling, interceptions and other roles. And then there's the thing about the servicing of the aircraft because of new policies implemented by the government and also the delay in 
uh, let's say recruitment of uh, various posts in military the uh, service department has or its capabilities have been well let's just say not improved as they had to but it's not their fault <laughs> who can keep this type of work rate um, I mean come on so various reports like uh, the CAG reports have uh, basically told the Air Force that their record of um, updating the aircraft and completing various uh, service related tasks has faltered in the recent years and the government doesn't seem to care because it's more concerned about its um, other aspects of government and the bureaucracy it seems that in the last 40 years they don't seem to have a contingency plan now i understand that the pages project the lca was important to us and we all wanted to be it to succeed and it did to some extent but isn't it great for a country that we would have like in early 90s we would have started building an rd33 klimov engine plant or something because at that time the russians were desperate and they even gave some technology technologies to the americans so why wouldn't they have it given to us it seems the word contingency plan is uh, non-existent from the vocabulary of people that are in the government and if we don't have contingency plans we will end up in the same situation we are in now hope you liked the video like comment and subscribe and thank you